Hey everybody, this is Will with Carolina Thrive Place, and today we are going to be talking about advertising. And as I was watching my website um, video, I noticed that I do a lot of this right here. So I do apologize if that irritates you, but that's the way I talk. Um, so, but it was really funny because it was very amplified with the video because all you see is this and my logo. Normally you have chat on the side where I'm demonstrating something, but yeah. Let's get started. All right, so you have a website, you have a logo, you have your company, you're you're good to go. Well, I'm not getting orders. Well, how do I get orders? Well, you need to drive people to your site. You need to drive people to um, either email you if you don't have a website, or to your Etsy or your Store Envy, your Am well Amazon's automatic. Um, people just have to search for what you have. Um, your Facebook marketplace little things like that <clears throat> well how do you drive people there there's many different ways to drive people to your site there's paid ads on Google there's paid ads on Facebook um, there's walking down the street handing out business cards which we're gonna go over tomorrow um, there's paid pr promotional ads on Etsy if you're on Etsy so <clears throat> advertising essentially is not free you have to pay to get people to notice you um, and generally who pays the most on like ads and stuff they get seen first um, but that's not always the case there's rotating ads as well there's also um, hard uh, advertising as well like on a website you may have a banner that flips but some people will say, okay, I want to pay you $150 for a month. I want a static um, banner. You can do stuff like that as well. But Google Ads is really good. Bing Ads is really good. Facebook Ads is really good as well. Um, <clears throat> because when people are, when you're surf surfing through your Facebook page and you notice ads, so you already know it works. Now you can do some physical ads like a billboard, which is convenient conventional advertising methods, um, which is a little more expensive. No, it's a whole lot more expensive. You're looking at thousands of dollars. If you have that much money, I would go for it. Um, it may or may not work for you. There's also email marketing, and you know, I have a MailChimp account. I wonder, give me a second, real quick. I'm looking that up. Let's look at audience. I have to sign in. So I have 307 people who are subscribers. On my on my newsletter so that's 307 potential customers every time I send out a newsletter every time I announce something so and that's as of recording on Sunday May 19th like I told you all earlier I'm recording all these up front so as of the time of recording of this video I had 307 subscribers so with that being said you know I can drive traffic well, I look at my, my analytics on a daily basis and I see how many total sessions I've had on my website. And I've noticed a, a substantial, a sustained amount of people every single day. Well, how do I do it? Well, YouTube, I talk about my um, website a decent amount of times, sometimes a little too much <laughs> in some people's opinion. But I drive people from my website there or from my YouTube channel there. I talk about it on my Facebook account. I'll post, I'll do email marketing. Um, I did have some paid um, promotion on Facebook. And so little things like that. <clears throat> I set up a marketing budget every single month and I say, okay, I wanna spend this much on advertising and marketing. Do you need to? No, you do not have to. Word of mouth is another good thing. 
um, when you're first starting out, you don't have that. You know, it takes time to build up word of mouth advertising and get it for free. Um, some other things you can do, especially if you're in the embroidery business or if you're in a business that you can provide a sample to a business locally, um, like a school or something, and say, hey, you know, I'm here in Irmo, South Carolina. There's a school right down the road from me. I can say, hey, I can do these shirts at this price. And they can say, no, but thank you for sending it. Or they like, hey, we're interested in doing it. How about do our soccer team jerseys? So you you don't always have to, you know, just say, hey, here I am and sit back and watch, see what happens. Sometimes you do need to step forward and say, okay, I'm going to be a proactive person. I'm going to go and talk to people face to face. I'm going to give, I'm going to handshake do some handshakes, um, some stuff like that. You have to do that as well. <clears throat> you know, and there's times I sit back and go, man, I wish I had a little more orders. What can I do? And then I'm like, oh, well, did I try this? Did I try that? Another good thing to do, um, especially for the giving a sample out, go down, go in your general area, write down business names. And see if they're a small business or a corporation. A corporation, they really can't use small... They, they generally cannot use a small business to do anything. But always ask. But write down all those businesses. And make it a point to visit a few of those every so often. Or a couple a day or a couple a week or a couple a month. Talk to them. Find out what they need, their needs are. And go from there. Because you just never know that they may like, oh, well, we need these shirts. We need these cups. We need uh, these hats. We need these binders or whatever your business is. And there you go. You start with that. Well, they have friends and family. You know, a lot of business owners um, know other business owners. So... This business owner will talk to this business owner, which will talk to this business owner. And then before long, you can't handle the amount of traffic you have. Then you, you start, you know, you say, okay, I can't take any more, but I know. Then you pass it to someone else who can handle the new stuff. So things like that. Definitely, you know, that's that's the proactive way um, that will cost you a little bit, but cost you more time, but less financial depending on your sample. Then there's the paid version and just hope somebody sees that ad. And that's the worst thing to do, um, in my opinion, is just to say, I'm going to do ads and just sit back and watch. Especially for embroidery and final business for shirts and stuff, you can't just pay an ad and hope people see it. Because someone may not think shirt, but they may think hat. But then if your ad is too big, then it's like, okay, I'm just going to ignore it because it's too much. Because you have less than two seconds to capture somebody's attention on online advertising. It is, is it the worst step? No, it can always, it can definitely help you. And I know I said it's the worst thing, but it's not really. I apologize about that. It is a, it is not, don't use it as your primary mode of advertisement. If you're in vinyl and embroidery and stuff like that, go talk to people. If you actually have a freestanding business, then join, you know, things like, I wouldn't say join the Chamber of Commerce because that is a major expense. But anytime that you hear, you know, open networking stuff, definitely go do that. Go talk to them. So you just never know. Okay? So... That's all I'm going to talk about with advertising. Um, today's letter is E. So, <coughs> excuse me. Today's letter is E. So, make sure that you give this video a thumbs up if you enjoy it. Please subscribe um, to the channel if you have not done so yet. Um, this, Please share this video with as many friends and family as you can. Because you never know that they may be thinking 
Oh, I just mumbled that. You do not know who may be looking to start their business, and this is what this video is, this week's video is about, is growing your business from nothing to something. Not really nothing, because we all have customers, even if it's family. Um, and tomorrow, is, we're going to be talking about paper products and stuff like that. So, until then, y'all have a wonderful day, and I will see you tomorrow. Bye.